Naomi, this is a relentlessly realistic movie. And on one hand, it's an action movie that never quits, but uh, it's also a character study of a family that if they don't trust each other and express their love for each other, they're not going to survive, are they? Exactly. Um, the theme of survival is, is such an interesting one. It, uh, you, you quickly work out the need to survive and, and who you're surviving for. Um, and, you know, when somebody said to me, do you want to do a movie about the tsunami, I, I didn't know, you know, it wasn't a slam dunk idea to me. I didn't know how that would work. Um, but then when I read the script, I, I really, it was really clear to me that at the heart of it was this beautiful, intimate family story. Um, and um, and I, I just... You know, once I, I read the script and met with the director, it was definitely a slam dunk. It felt, it felt yes, that there's this heavy backdrop um, and this massive disastrous event that moved us, you know, from an outsider's point of view. But once you got into that story, it really felt real and it really felt um, a story that was, you know, about something that, that's important to all of us. And it's seen through a child's eyes. That's what makes it very scary. This Lucas, your son, he uh, he did an amazing job, didn't he, carrying this this point of view? Yeah, I mean, he's extraordinary. That that little guy. From the first day I met him, I knew he had something special. Um, and Juan Antonio created this wonderful environment for us in the rehearsal period. First of all, we were just basically goofing around doing you know, drama school exercises um, and in order to just make us feel safe and that we could trust each other and create this family history in six minutes and um, and um, and then it got progressively more serious in the way we would rehearse and um, and, um, and 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 he's just got an incredibly wonderful instrument that is clearly um, and he's also got a great discipline as well. Like a lot of the kids, I mean, I think Ewan had it, in a, it was a little more difficult for him because he had the really little ones who are fighting to concentrate, which is, which is normal for a kid. Their focus is not great anyway, much less, you know, put them on the film set and say, you've got to do this 20 times. Um, so it was more difficult for him. But I had Tom Holland who was really committed to what he was doing. He'd already had the experience of Billy Elliot and he knew he, he, he was serious about wanting to become an actor, so so it was wonderful to watch his talent emerge day by day and, and never fail. The mother-son dynamic is interesting to watch in this movie because uh, you represent two authority figures, actually, not just the mother, but your doctor. And in order to get through this situation, you have to accept your son, this uh, child, as an equal. And you have to trust him, and you have to... Uh, and, and all of these relationship things are going on at the same time, aren't they? Yeah, um, and that's that, again the the part of the story um, that really interested me. That dynamic between the two of them, and how she was um, in charge, but at a certain point, she the roles almost had to reverse, and it was about giving in and letting you know still being strong, but letting him take care of her, um, and that was. You know, I don't think any mother would wish that upon a child, um, that they're so weak that their their son has to prop them up and, and keep them going. Um, now, so you're, a, you're a mother of two sons, right? Correct. So this, this probably had special resonance with you, didn't it? Yes, it did. And, you know, I've done movies about um, where I've played a mother where, before I've had kids, um, and... There's no question it, it, it increases intensity. intensity. Now, it, what is interesting also about the relationship back and forth is that uh, there are two scenes in particular I, I can think of. One is when they encounter uh, the stranded child out in the debris and another one at the uh, hospital bedside where she d decides she has to teach uh, young Lucas. I mean, part of the reason they're saving the, the other kid is she's trying to teach Lucas to, uh, to care. Uh, at, at the bedside scene, uh, when she sends him out as an ambassador to, the, uh, to help other people, that's a mother teaching her son to uh, a life lesson, isn't it? Yeah, 
she she was sure at that point that she you know because she was a doctor and she knew how much blood she was losing um, she was sure that she was going to die um, and that was absolutely the highest thing on her list um, which was to to impart that kind of lesson uh, to her son um, that was that was something that we talked about quite a lot, me and Maria, the, the real woman. Now let's talk about that. This is based on a real story. And uh, <laughs> uh, you, you uh, met her. What, did you base the character on her? What did you learn from her? I mean, I learned so much. I absolutely based it on her. It, it, was, it was very evident that the story felt really rooted in truth, every detail. And of course, I mean, that was from reading the script the first time and then meeting her, all these stories, all these beats in the script indeed came from her voice and her truth. And, um, and then she spoke with great detail about each isolated moment. A lot of people, when they've gone through that level of disaster or grief or, you know, and, or anything like that, um, find it hard to talk about or can't really go there or, you know, don't want to have to relive it too much, but this is not the case with Maria. She's an open book and incredibly articulate, and a writer herself, and um, would write endless emails about each each scene that we were taking on. Um, so it was incredibly informative, and I was struck by, you know, how courageous she was and how heroic. And I mean, I, I just. I think with these movies, you always you you go with the experience because you think, how would I deal with this? Who would I become in this level of crisis? And I know for certain I'm terrible in a crisis, um, and I can't think straight. And I, you know, so I was really I was really blown away by the things she would say. I go, really? I just can't imagine that I. I think I would fold. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to. But she was. She said she never felt more connected to her instinct than those those hours, those days. Um, and um, she was sure of every decision that she made. Now, uh, physically, this has to be the most demanding role you've ever done, right? That you're knocked through a glass wall. You've got all of these drowning scenes. Um, uh, Talk to us about the the physicality of doing this role. Yeah, I mean, definitely the most demanding thing I've ever done or care to do again. <laughs> I mean, it, it, everyone says working with water is 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 bad and difficult, and we all know that. But this was um, a month, you know, in the water, under the water, um, and um, Tom loved it. He's 14, he's an acrobat. He felt he was at the water park every day. <laughs> I'm, I'm not either of those things. <laughs> um, so it was not nearly as much fun. And um, yeah, I mean, it was tough, but it was, um, it was great. The mechanics that they worked out worked, were really great. And, you know, he was, I'm glad that we weren't on a stage and with the green screen behind us just going, you know, we were in the water doing um, what would look most truthful, and that and that really helped the performance. I think. 